get into this new edition of shows on the latter portion of the week. However, you are still locked and loaded on the hottest show on the streets in terms of Alabama football talk. It's in my own words. With yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to dive into the latter portion of offensive coaches that Nick Saban trying to bring into the program. Now, of course, there has not been any confirmation or finalization on Saban's part where these names are concerned. But according to the reports that have been thrown out here and what I've been told from credible people, the uh, it's pretty much set in stone. The offensive side of the ball pretty much ready and set to go. We'll get into that, though, in segment two. To start this off, a lot of fans not fond of entertaining the thought of having Pete Golding call the defense for the Crimson Tide for next season. And when you bring this thought up to people, it's immediately met with he's too young, he's not ready, he's not prepared for Southeastern Conference play. This is it's basically the same thing with Tosh Lapoy. The defense is going to suck. You know, where are the sexy names? Where are the big names? Where are the splash higher names? What happened to the conversation with Dave Aranda? What happened to the conversation with Bob Shoup? What happened to the conversation with Jimmy Lake, a name that we can identify concretely as a splash hire, as a big name hire? People are not feeling the possibility of Pete Golding potentially being the defensive coordinator for Alabama. And for me, I think it's a boss move. I think it's the most perfect segue, the most perfect hire for Nick Saban to make. And here's why. To me, there is a big difference between Pete Golding and Tosh Lapoy. Tosh Lapoy, prior to last season, had no prior defensive coordinator experience. None. Nada. Zilch. You can forget about it. No prior D.C. experience. This was a defensive line coach at Cal Berkeley. This was a defensive line coach at the University of Washington. This was somebody who played on the defensive line at Cal Berkeley from 2000 to 2005. When he came to Alabama in 2014, the boy was a defensive recruiting intern upstairs. He shuffled paperwork. He had the in-house recruiting visits. He cut game tape did small things as an intern upstairs. When he became an on-field coach in 2015, he worked with outside linebackers from 2015 to this past season. Now, of course, in 2017, he was the co-defensive coordinator, but Jeremy Pruitt had the final say. Jeremy Pruitt had the final call on what the defense was going to run. This past season, Tosh Lepore, for the first time in his career, had the final say as a defensive coordinator for what this unit was going to run. Pete Golding was upstairs. Pete Golding could make suggestions. He could see something on the field that Alabama's defense could exploit where the opposing offense is concerned, and he would get on the headset and make a, make a move, make a suggestion, make a point, make an idea to Nick Saban and Taj LaPoy. But at the end of the day, the final call fell on LaPoy. And a lot of times, the reason why the defense was so confused this past season, guys were out of, guys were not in the right spots, guys were looking like they were in space and no man's land didn't know what to do. Taj LaPoy, a lot of times, was not able to consistently communicate where everybody needed to be at. And that's because he was not used to being a defensive coordinator could not effectively put guys in the right spot on the field. That was a big part of a lot of the struggles. Versus Pete Golding, people, despite his age at 35 years, of, uh, 35 years, he's got nine years of experience calling defenses. Three years at Tuscaloosa College from 2007 to 09. Two years at Delta State his alma mater in Louisiana from 2010 to 2011. Two years at Southeastern Louisiana, 2012 to 2013. 
two years at University of Texas San Antonio from 2016 to 2017. You add that all up, that is nine years of experience. Despite these being small schools, he's got experience. Tosh the boy prior to Alabama had none as a defensive coordinator. Pete Golding prior to Alabama, nine years of defensive coordinator experience, but that's not the biggest part. The biggest piece of the puzzle that a lot of people need to get a need to get an angle on here is history is repeating itself at the University of Alabama. And this is what I mean by this. You look at Nick Saban for just a moment. Nick Saban is widely regarded as the GOAT, greatest of all time, best to ever do it in the coaching tenure. Where did Nick Saban, what position did Nick Saban play in high school? Played defensive back. What position did Nick Saban play in college at Kent State? Played defensive back. What position did Bill Belichick hire Nick Saban to when Saban was with Belichick in the National Football League with the Cleveland Browns from 1991 to 1994? Oh, it was a defensive back. Nick Saban used the defensive back background, the background of playing in the secondary, and he parlayed that into being the defensive genius that we have known him to be, or we have seen him grow to become today. It was a defensive back. And he's used that to win five national championships at the University of Alabama, six overall in his career, if you count the one that he got at Louisiana State University. But not just Nick Saban, you look at the two elite defensive coordinators he had for the Crimson Tide prior to LaPoy coming in, and both of these guys are head coaches now. You look at Kirby Smart. Kirby Smart, where did he play in college? Was a defensive back at Valdosta State. Comes to Alabama, was a defensive back's coach then grew to be an elite defensive coordinator, won a number of national championships and Southeastern Conference titles as defensive coordinator. Now he's a head coach of Georgia. Where'd it come from? Having a background of being a guy in the secondary, a defensive back, controlling things, manipulating things, getting everything in order from the back five, the last line of defense. And then you bring in Jeremy Pruitt, the same deal. Was a defensive back in college. Coach defensive backs in high school. Coach defensive backs in college at the University of Alabama. And then came back to Alabama from his time at Florida State and Georgia to be a defensive coordinator. Won a Southeastern Conference title. Won a national championship. And now he's in. The University of Tennessee as the head coach, but it started off with that defensive backs background and the individual that some of you are shooing away, Pete Golding. Look at history work, folks. Guess where he played his college ball? Delta State as a defensive back. Hello, was a safety from 2002 to 2005. Was a safety. Delta State, Louisiana native here falling under the criteria that Nick Saban likes, that Nick Saban loves, a defensive back's background. Real recognizing real here. Nick Saban groomed himself up as a defensive back. The two other guys, Jeremy Pruitt, Kirby Smart, groomed themselves up as a defensive back. And here comes Pete Golding, that shares the same story. History repeating himself. History repeating itself. Golding, defensive back in college. He's got nine years of defensive back experience. He's got nine years of defensive coordinator experience. And on top of that, when you look at what Golding's done, and twenty, and because not a lot of people are going to give him the credit for the Tuscaloosa College experience, the Delta State experience the Southeastern Louisiana experience because these are all small schools. I get that. So, he goes to Southern Miss 
from 2014 to 2015, 2015. Big school, FBS school, Division I program here. 2014, his first year at Southern Miss, the Golden Eagles were terrible. They were 3-9 and nine in Golding's first year. But his second year, you want to talk about a big jump, vast improvement? Southern Miss went 9-5 in 2015. They were forcing turnovers. They created 13 picks. Four of them came from Kang and Reed, and Kang and Reed went on to play in the NFL. You go from 3-9 and nine to 9-5 nine and five in one season, and you're creating turnovers. Pete Golding makes a big difference. And then Golding goes to University of Texas San Antonio, a young Division I program that started in 2012. They're about to enter their eighth season this upcoming year, the 2019 season. And when you look at Pete Golding, he was there 2016-2017. 2016, UTSA gave up 28 points a game. 2017, the second year of Golding, how about 17 points a game? Big improvement. Big difference. Nate Gain, a defensive back, led the team with four picks. Pete Golding, attention to detail, quick learner, makes big-time improvements and he's got the experience, and he's got the background that Nick Saban likes and thrives on. And then here's something else. You look at the coaches Saban is putting around him. First and foremost, let's let's look at Charles Kelly here for a minute. Charles Kelly, who has a lot of defensive back experience, defensive coordinator coaching experience, was a D coordinator at Florida State from 2014 to 2017, prior to being at Tennessee this past year on Jeremy Pruitt's staff. As a D coordinator, Charles Kelly produced Jalen Ramsey and Derwin James of the Florida State, both guys in the National Football League. Ramsey with the Jacksonville Jaguars, Derwin James with the Los Angeles Chargers. Charles Kelly, being at Alabama, is going to be the co-DC and the safeties coach. You put Carl Scott with cornerbacks. This allows Nick Saban to take a step back from coaching DBs because he's got the guys that have the experience that know what they're doing. You don't have to babysit these guys and micromanage these guys because you trust they know what they're doing. They got the experience. They're gonna be able to get the ball rolling and have everything in line, which leaves you, Nick Saban, the opportunity to pour all of yourself into Pete Golding, making sure that Pete's got everything lined up. Nick Saban sees a young, more refined Kirby Smart and Pete Golding. Players love him. Players have a great vibe around him. And I feel like once Nick is able to turn him loose, you're going to see a defense that you become used to seeing prior to this past year. An attacking style defense with attention to detail that knows what's going on in every situation playing sound, consistent, situational football. So before we look at Pete Golding as if to say this is not a good move, this is not a good idea on behalf of Nick Saban, look at history repeating itself. Nick Saban was a defensive back and he grew to being Greatest coach of all time, Kirby Smart, Jeremy Pruitt, two guys Nick Saban brought in with a defensive backs background. They parlayed that into being elite defensive coordinators, conference champions, national champions, and now they're both head coaches in the Southeastern Conference. And now here comes Pete Golding with experience as a defensive backs coach. He's played the position. And he's got experience as a defensive coordinator. Nine years calling plays. Let's see what this young man can do. Because Nick Saban really likes what this guy is bringing to the table right now. So definitely uh, check out that research on Pete Golding. Pretty interesting right there.
This takes us to our first break. Or in my own words, as always, ladies and gentlemen, check out the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. Great content right there. We're hitting you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Nothing but nonstop Crimson Tide football content. You want it. You crave it. You lust for it. It's right there. You can download it via the uh, iPhone App Store if you're rocking Team Apple. Google Play Store for all my Team Android folks out there. If you are a podcast guy, podcast girl, if you are the audio type, then you check out the In My Own Words podcast on YouTube, uh, iTunes, to the computer, Apple Podcast, the mobile option for your phone, uh, overcastfm.com. We even have you on Spotify, on TuneIn Radio, and on Stitcher. So, so many ways to check out the In My Own Words podcast and Touchdown Alabama Magazine. When we get back, we dive into the remainder of offensive names being brought on staff and my thoughts on those guys. We'll be right back, folks. It's in my own words. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 